Hello, welcome to Spotlight. Today I'm going to be talking about this 1938 Gibson Advanced Jumbo. If that sounds like something you'd be into, stick around. So this is a 1938 uh, Gibson Advanced Jumbo. Uh, it, I believe it was their kind of top of the line model in 1938. It's a really amazing guitar. Um, has you know a really big sound. It's a big bodied guitar. You know, almost. Uh, it's basically a dreadnought with uh, with sloped shoulders. Um, it's, it's really great sounding, um, a really special guitar. In terms of the wood on this guitar, uh, we have Brazilian rosewood fretboard, Brazilian rosewood back and sides, really beautiful. And uh, I believe the neck is mahogany and a spruce top. Brazilian Rosewood uh, Bridge as well. And this cool tiger striped uh, pickguard. All kind of the best features you could have uh, in a Gibson guitar at the time. Really cool inlays with these diamonds um, and arrows. Uh, kind of a, a unique feature on this guitar, which kind of made it stand out from the other guitars. Yeah, so this is uh, this is one of the, the high-end models of 1938. Um, has a lot of great features but for me it's uh, it's all about the sound uh, the sound of this guitar it has all of the kind of sensitivity and uh, and openness that you'd want in a smaller body acoustic as well as the ability to just be super loud uh, because of the, the big body um, it does you know just as well at strumming as it does at picking um, a really great guitar overall you might be wondering how I came into uh, having a guitar like this. I didn't go and spend uh, thirty to sixty thousand dollars on this guitar. Um, I inherited it through um, my wife's grandpa. It's been a real treat to to be able to have this guitar in my life for the last few years. Um, it's a it's a family heirloom, so not something that I'm going to be selling at any time, and. Uh, it has, you know, some amazing qualities. It has a history uh, in my wife's family. It has, um, you know, it's been around. Um, my wife learned how to play guitar on this guitar. Um, so there's a lot of cool stories around this guitar for, for her family. For me, it's been a, a really important tool in the studio. I've recorded this guitar on on pretty much most recordings that I've done. Uh, since I've owned it. Um, it records really well and it has a really uh, nice sound that I can't really repli replicate on my other guitars. Um, the EQ and the character of the guitar really comes through nicely in recording. So let me play this guitar a little bit for you. I have a pick here. I'm going to show you a bit of what it sounds like strummed. I'm recording just through my uh, H5 uh, stereo mics, so um, it's usually a pretty good sound for acoustic guitar. <laughs> So you can hear in the quality of that sound that it's it's got a lot of thumpiness. It doesn't have a ton of sustain. Uh, it's very percussive sounding guitar uh, and has a lot of dynamics. As you 
you can get a nice kind of soft sound with the side of your pick and you can dig right here. It does have some some bottom end to it for sure and the high end is I think pretty muted it's it's really comes focused it's a focused sound but it's a uh, it's really in the mid-range that it comes to life there's not a ton of high frequency coming off the guitar these are relatively dead strings but um, that's why I find this guitar kind of really sings <laughs> So here is uh, the guitar with some finger picking. fingernail uh, grown here for playing guitar and it it um, you can really hear how the attack of the note comes through but it's very subtle it has a very kind of uh, piano like uh, attack I think uh, you know very soft felt piano hammer kind of feel to it. Um, a burst of high frequency that can come out of the guitar a uh, really cool sound overall this guitar has uh, a lot of kind of special character um, and it really is great uh, for recording because you, it doesn't have all that high frequency that can often get in the way of a vocal or hi-hats um, when you want a, a, an acoustic guitar to be a prominent part of the mix it really is going to sit in that mid-range and so this guitar has a such a unique uh, characterful uh, mid-range uh, that just works perfectly in that kind of a situation. I mean pros for this guitar it's uh, obviously one of the more expensive acoustics uh, in the world right now. Uh, there was only 200 of these made um, and my guess is, uh, you know, they go from between thirty and, and sixty thousand uh, dollars. So that's an expensive guitar. Uh, you could buy a lot of guitars with that money. Um, but it has a very, uh, it's very well built, and it has a very interesting, unique sound. Uh, these guitars were really famous um, uh, with bluegrass players because they're so loud. Um, but they can do a lot more than that. Um, they have, you know, the ability to, you know, be really great uh, at finger style uh, and, you know, be more gentle than uh, just being a big, loud box. Cons for it, I mean, a big con for me is that it's worth so much money that I could never uh, modify it or, or take it on the road or do anything like that. It's very much a studio guitar that has to stay home stay safe um it doesn't have a pickup and i and, uh, won't ever put a pickup in it because you just don't want to make any modifications of the guitar because of its value which is unfortunate cons uh it is going to need a reset uh on the neck pretty soon and um so right now the action is, is starting to ride up um 
it's still playable, but it's not anything like my other guitars. You know, you really do have to work for it. Overall, it's a great guitar that I'm I'm so lucky to have uh, in my life, and uh, and every once in a while you have a, a guitar that you know comes around and really speaks to you, and this guitar has a really special place in my heart, um, a really special place in my wife's family history. Um, yeah, overall, a really cool guitar.